Macroeconomic equilibrium will be determined by the interaction of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. An equilibrium will be reached where the two curves intersect. And so we can use this as a starting point to model the impact of changes in any of the factors affecting aggregate demand or aggregate supply on inflation and real GDP, and therefore also on the level of employment. So anything causing aggregate demand to shift to the right, so that could, for example, be a cut in interest rates causing more consumer spending and investment. Well, that will push up both the price level, so inflation, and also real GDP in the short run. But in the long run, though, because of the vertical long run aggregate supply curve, that's under the classical model, the economy will return to the same level of output as before, because this is already the productive capacity of the economy, but the higher price level will persist. Now, with left shifts in aggregate demand, and that could be caused by cutting government spending, that will reduce real G GDP and price level in the short run. But in the long run, the economy again returns to full employment output, but this time at a lower price level. Right shifts in aggregate supply, whether in the short run or the long run, bring down price level, helping to control inflation, whilst also boosting real GDP. This is why policies which boost aggregate supply, like education and training and investment in physical capital, are so beneficial to an economy because they just don't have that trade-off that demand side policies have. Left shifts in aggregate supply push up price level whilst also reducing real GDP. If sustained in the long run, they'll reduce productive capacity of the economy.